Okay, this is Robin from the Dancing Goat. And today we're going to spin with the Zot Zotal spindle, the Zotal spindle. Um, I've done a bunch of shows on the on Facebook, on the uh, virtual Michigan Fiber Festival that we had. We did uh, we did about a dozen shows there. Uh, we had our Chris Kringle market last weekend. And uh, I'm going to put some spinning lessons up. I haven't had any lessons up on uh, YouTube for a while, so I'm going to put some spinning lessons up on on how to use some of the new spindle forms that I developed during this period of lockdown. Um, I've got a, a, a variety of a half a dozen uh, brand new spindle forms that no one's ever made before, uh, varieties that no one else has ever made. Uh, they've been very popular in the, uh, with the virtual fiber festivals that we've had. And um, uh, so the first one in the list is the Zotal. I'll do the Tayet and the uh, Spinning Adi and the, uh, a couple of other uh, different spindles here over the next next couple of days. I'm going to do the the uh, Zotal and the Tayet this morning. So the Zotal spindle, the Zotile, um, how that's pronounced in Basque, I have no idea, but it's spelled T-X-O-A-T-I-L-E, and the original spindle was a drop spindle. So the original spindle had a butterfly whirl. These are very ancient spindle forms. Um, and it was, uh, they were carved. They date all the way back to around 9,000 years ago. Uh, the Basque people preserved the knowledge of this spindle. And the original had a, had a notch here with a, a forked stick. Um, I decided, since I make support spindles, I decided to make a variety of the Zotal in a, in a support spindle mode. And that's how I'm going to be demonstrating this this morning. And uh, this is for a, this is for one of the uh, Michigan Virtual Fiber Festival customers that wanted to see how this spindle was used. And um, I've been overdue for getting some spindle videos up for quite some time. I've uh, been really busy with the Oak Hill Farm and uh, uh, I've got a little bit of time here towards the holidays where I'm going to be able to get a bunch of videos up here on YouTube. So uh, welcome, uh, you know, welcome to my audience, for my students and customers from the festival circuit and from uh, all the virtual customers and students that we've had over the last couple of months it's been a lot of fun so the zonal spindle is a is a unique spindle form because in almost every spindle form the idea is to wrap the cop the cop onto the shaft of the spindle and the whirl isn't part of the part of the show basically other than to provide a momentum for for the spin with the zonal that's it's backwards the the shaft is used, of course, to to spin, but the cop is wrapped onto the whirl. And the idea with the Zotal spindle is, uh, and uh, one of my customers named these. these. These are called bones. So the the spindle shaft is is uh, uh, removable. The the whirl comes off. So when you fill the cop up. And I put uh, the first one I spun on. I put four ounces of Shetland fiber onto this uh, onto this whirl, and uh, I still had room for more. I could have probably put six ounces on here. So I had a great big old ball. That ball goes into a bowl, and then you just unwind, and you either use a nitty knotty or a center pull ball winder to take it off of there. So it's a this is a very versatile spindle form. If you got one shaft, you have three bones. You take that in your bag with you to a guild meeting or to a festival. Um, you basically have got three spindles with you. So I'm going to spin on this for a little bit. I'll wrap on uh, spinning it and wrapping on is the two questions that my one of my customers had. So we're going to we're going to do that. And I'm going to draft. And this spins like a top. So I come in here and I either spin from the side with my thumb and forefinger, and it's a it's a relatively slow, comparatively slow spindle. So this is strictly a wool spindle. This wouldn't be used for any other fibers than wool. Anything that's slick that requires a high, uh, high spin rate, this spindle wouldn't be for that. Um, so I'm going to spin. I'm going to draft. I'm going to make a little bit of yarn here. And normally, I would be spinning with this spindle on the floor. So I'm spinning here with it close enough so that you can see what's going on. And normally the spindle would be on the floor so I can get a lot more reach and I can make a lot, a lot more yarn. So I've got a little bit there. I'm going to take it. Uh, all my spindles are hook spindles. Uh, the traditional spindle uh, for the 
for the Zodal was a hook spindle with a fork stick. And now I'm just going to drop my drop my lead here. And I'm going to wrap this on. Let's see here. There we go. Now you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to wrap this on like this. And I'm going to build, start building that cop. I'm going to keep spinning here. Take a half wrap off there. I'm going to spiral back up to the hook. Put a couple of wraps on the hook. And put my stuff in my hand here. We'll go back in. So the fair set or the Dalvin, the Celtic stick spindle, that's another one that I'll, I'll be spinning on. And I'll get a video up on that. So the Dalgan and the Tayet spindle, the, the new the new spooled ancient Egyptian farm spindle. Uh, my name is Robin, and uh, we own the uh, Oakdale Farm and the Dancing Goats craft business. I've been in business since 1987. Uh, we've been online on eBay since uh, around 2000, 1999. And I've been on Etsy for 10 years. So for the last 10 years, Etsy's been, since 2010, um, Etsy's been my primary craft channel where I do my sales. And I'm gonna wrap. I'll wrap on here, up and over that from both directions on each side. And spiral back up to the hook. Been online since uh, 1999 on eBay and I've been on, on Etsy since 2010 uh, and I'm going to be on Etsy. The, Etsy's been good to me and uh, I just, uh, I'm about at 3,000 sales now and one of the top, uh, one of the top spindle makers in the country and uh, finding the oldest spindle farms and doing the research in the British Museum and the Smithsonian uh, in the ethno ethnographic reports from the Smithsonian Institution um, I managed to find a lot of forget, forgotten fiber tools, and I brought those fiber tools back to life. I also do metal work, so I do a lot of copper smithing with copper alloys of various sorts. And, of course, all my customers and students are familiar with that for anybody that's joining us. Uh, one of my most popular videos on YouTube has been my brew making lesson. So I, I do Appalachian brew making. I'm the Appalachian brew maker at the Smoky Mountain Fiber Arts Festival in Townsend, Tennessee. And my brew making lesson has been my most popular lesson. People from all over the world have bought my, have bought my brew making tools. And uh, I brought a lot of people into, into brew making, into Appalachian brew making, especially the oldest form of brew making. And I'm very proud of that. So if uh, anybody's joining me that's got some of my broom tools thanks a lot for purchasing those and i hope you make a lot of a lot of fun brooms so the zodal is a unique spindle farm it's uh, provided the inspiration for some other spindle types uh, again this this whirl is removable the whirl comes off i'm going to make a little bit more yarn here the whirl comes off New world goes on, and the world goes in a bowl, and it's very easy then to take the yarn off and put it in a skein or use a center pull ball winder to uh, a nostopene or a, or a mechanical winder. Uh, to get that yarn into a center pull ball so that then you can ply it. And this, this tool. This spindle plies just as well as it spins. So, again, it's a slow spindle. It's just for wool. And we're in, today I'm located where my little studio is at, where I've done all my videos. We're in the Etsy store. I got an old farmhouse in the middle of nowhere in southern Illinois. And the old farmhouse has uh, got a, a back porch that was a, a, a wrecked screen porch, and I closed that in uh, right after we moved here. And it's my Etsy store. So all the junk you see behind me is not really junk. It's boxes full of handmade items. Yeah, all these things that you see and all the things in the store, uh, of course, except the fleece, our, our, our sheepies grow, grow the fleece for us. But uh, all the things you see in the store, 
any in the Etsy store are made by me and made by hand. Scroll back up. Spiral back up to the hook. Put a couple wraps on the hook. The, uh, a lot of traditional support spindles have got a point on the end or a taper. And there's a couple different ways to use the point or the taper. You can use it like a flicking point at a 45 degree angle to spin with. Or you can uh, put a half hitch on the end, uh, like on a turkey spindle, and use them that way. Um, but I teach spinning. And I've taught over a thousand people to spin in over the last decade at our festivals. And uh, I brought a lot of spinners that were not able to spin on or figure out the, the, uh, the drop spindle. I brought a lot of those, a lot of those folks into the fiber arts, who never would have done anything to fiber arts because they couldn't figure out the drop spindle. So the, the, the hook, on a support spindle, especially if you're considering teaching somebody, the hook on a support spindle is the way to go. It makes a support spindle very easy to use, and for somebody that's starting out, there's a lot of things to learn in spinning. There's a lot of techniques and methods, and those can wait. Uh, the, the secret with teaching somebody to spin is to make it fun and to get them started spinning in a, in a constructive way where they've got success in the class. And uh, I've got a 100% success rate. I can teach anybody. Anybody can learn to spin. Now, whether you stick with it or not is a matter of motivation. But these spindles are so simple to use with the hook that... I'm convinced that it's really the only way to teach to start with. And then for more advanced techniques, for more advanced spindle types, for, for more traditional spindle types that, you know, if you want a forked stick on this, or if you want a point like on a true Russian spindle, uh, those things can be learned later. And there's lots and lots of videos. Uh, fortunately for, for all of us, just like this, there's there's lots of YouTubes out there available for just about anything that you want to learn. Um, but again, remember, I teach new people how to spin. I've taught a lot of young people how to spin. And um, uh, people of all ages. And these hooks on the end of these support spindles are the way to go. So that's a, that's a pretty good overview. I'm going to... So this is the first live... YouTube that I've done, so I don't know exactly how this is going to work at the end of the end of the process here. I'm going to wrap this up and see how my video looks and see if I want to leave it up. Um, if you watch this, uh, my sales channel all the way to the end here, which is I've always done with my older videos, use Frost as a coupon at checkout for a holiday checkout on uh, on Etsy. Just find the Dancing Goats one word, find the shop, and then there's 400 items up there of all sorts of fiber tools, and use Frost at checkout for 10% off. Uh, Frost is a permanent coupon. I leave that up there because it's on my videos, and uh, usually on my videos, I don't put the coupon up till the end as, a, as an Easter egg type thing to say thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you come in and buy something from the shop, I'll get that shipped out usually the next day because everything that you see in the shop um, is in the boxes behind me. And I don't have to make anything. It, uh, it usually will go out the next day. So I can get things out pretty quick for the holidays. And I'll do a, another of these videos for, uh, for some of the other spindle farms. So thanks for joining me. And um, I'm going to try and wrap this thing up here. And uh, we'll see you again.